So now that we have our uh, rod bearing clearances measured, we have our piston pin to rod measurements um, completed. We've measured our pin to piston clearances. We've gapped our rings. Um, I've boxed them into each individual cylinder. Um, so after I've cut them, I just put them back in the box, numbered it. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do our final clean. Um, so we're gonna take apart the rod, blow the cap apart. We're gonna clean everything, put it back where it was. Uh, we're going to take our uh, pistons here that have a still a little bit of debris in here from machining and we're going to clean them up. Uh, we're going to clean the piston pin. Um, we're going to fit our pin clips into the pistons and then install the rod to the piston itself. And then we'll move on to installing the rings to the pistons themselves. But then we're going to go ahead, we're going to take the torque plate off and we'll start installing the assemblies into the block. Okay, so now that we have everything cleaned up, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install our piston pin clips. Um, I like to install one side first uh, on all pistons on the same side, and then go ahead and assemble each rod afterwards, and then put the last clap, uh, clip in um, all together. So you're gonna take it, and you're gonna install your piston pin clip. Uh, I usually like to put it opposite of the uh, oil jet relief uh, in the bottom of the piston skirt, you can see there. Uh, or on the job number side or the part number side here. Um, so what I typically do is I put the clip in at a 90 degree. Get it to sit and then I'll, I'll clip the top side in. And then now that the top part of the piston pin is clipped in, I'll just slide the pin into the other side and then it'll snap into place if you push it in. And then there you have one pin, uh, piston pin clip installed. Um, it's a lot easier than trying to, uh, I guess, force it in there and turn it. Uh, once you do have it installed, you can decide if you want to rotate the end of the clip just past uh, this, uh, I guess, removal uh, port here. Um, it'll make it easier for the next guy to remove it. Um, so if you want to uh, do that, it's kind of a courtesy thing. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can't get them out um, with it at any position. You might just damage the clip. So yeah, we'll repeat that for all six pistons and then we'll move on to installation of the rod. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna assemble the rod to the piston. Uh, we'll just do one set first, um, and then we're gonna carry and repeat the, the same steps to the rest of them. Um, so what I usually do, uh, I will put the assembly loop inside the piston first. Uh, should you lubricate the uh, piston pin um, home here inside the piston itself, and you can set that down. Um, and then you can lubricate the rod inside. Okay, so once you have the uh, assembly loop on your rod and on your piston, um, we'll go ahead, we'll just put a little bit on the pin as well. Just a light coat, set that down for a second. Um, so what we're gonna talk about next here on the rods themselves. But with the RB26 Manly rod, there's not really a position you can put this in um, and it would be wrong, so to speak. Um, they do go both ways if you wanted to, but what you could do, um, or what we like to do here, is uh, always put the exhaust side um, of the engine on the tang side, or sorry, the, the tang side of the rod, whereas the locators of the, of the um, uh, rod bearings on the exhaust side of the engine. Um, so that makes the Manly uh, logo facing forward. And then obviously when you're orientating your piston onto your rod, you wanna make sure that the valve relief, sorry, the oil jet relief, is always where the oil jet relief will be inside of the cylinder. So in this case, the valve relief um, on the 26 is always gonna to be towards the rear side of the engine. So that's gonna be the back. And then the Manly uh, logo is gonna be towards the front. So we'll go ahead and we'll assemble that now. Okay, now once you have your piston pin and your rod assembled, just double check. Make sure you've got your logo to the front or the uh, rod bearing tanks to the exhaust side of the engine. Then you're gonna wanna make sure you have your oil jet relief on the correct part of the engine. So that's gonna be towards the rear on the RP26. 
um, and then your assembly is good, uh, we can go ahead now and we can put in the piston pin clip. Um, this piston pin clip is uh, a little bit more difficult than the other side will be, um, so you may or may not struggle a little bit while you're going to install it. So I typically like to install these ones without a glove on um, because I will often clip them in and get the glove stuck behind the ring and then you got to take the clip out and uh, redo it again anyways so you may as well just uh, struggle without gloves on. Um, it's probably the only part of an engine assembly where I'll tell you to take off your gloves. Try not to get your hands too lubricated up with the assembly lube but you're going to want to just place the clip in like this and just pass the uh, removal uh, relief they have uh, machined in here and then you're going to want to squeeze from both sides and push down. Now once you get to a certain position you can usually take a flathead and at the top Continue the pressure down, and then it should clip into place. There we go. Now when you have it installed, just make sure that you have it seated correctly into the groove. Um, you don't want these pins to cut, or these uh, clips to fall out, or it will lead to um, a catastrophic failure. Okay, so now that we have our uh, rod and piston assembly completed, uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna repeat the same steps we just showed you here for the rest of them. Um, and then we'll move on to installing the rings onto the piston, and then uh, installing them into the block. So I always recommend um, you put assembly lube in the piston pin. Um, there is a, a large correlation between um, assembly lube and, and dry fitting and or using just regular engine oil in this area. Um, this is one of the areas it takes the longest to get oil into. Um, so you'll definitely want to put some sort of assembly lube, usually the stuff used for the bearings in here as well, because this will greatly affect how long your engine lasts after the very first startup. Um, this allows the, the oil to get in there and just like anything else in the engine with assembly lube to lubricate and also wash away when the engine oil does eventually get to that area. So next up, now that we have our piston attached to our rod, um, again, as you're doing it, just always make sure you got things correctly installed. So we're gonna make sure, hey, we have our manly facing forward. Um, we have our valve or our oil jet relief um, towards the rear. And then we also have our tangs um, to the exhaust side of the engine. Uh, both of our clips are installed and seated in the position that they need to be in. They're inside the groove. Um, like I said, you can rotate the ends towards the removal groove if you want to. It can be done later, it doesn't really matter. Um, so now that we have that done, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna install our uh, rings. Um, first ring you're going to be installing is the oil um, support ring. Um, this one pretty much goes between the two uh, smaller oil control rings. This one's really easy, those two are really easy. Um, the top two get a little more challenging. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to roll this one on. This one's really, really, I guess, nimble and uh, it sits on the piston nice and easy. You're going to want to make sure the ends are butted together, not overlapping. So you're going to want to make sure that the ends are not like this. You're going to want to make sure it's pushed over and they're butted together. Um, pretty much so you can't really tell that there's a break there. Just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install our first oil control ring. Um, I usually like to do it on the bottom side of that. Um, usually there is, there is a ring orientation. Um, we're gonna do that after we install them all, just cause I'm not gonna consider it now cause I'm gonna be handling it. Um, I'll be turning the rings and stuff as I'm handling it. So I'm not gonna worry about the orientation quite yet. Um, so you're going to want to set the end of the ring underneath the oil control ring and then you're going to want to roll it around the piston and then set it down underneath the oil control ring. Just like that. Again, you're going to want to make sure that that break inside the oil control ring does not overlap as you install that. Um, once you have the first one on, it's not going to be too big of an issue to install. Um, it'll stay in that position now that we have that first one on. And then we're going to just do the second one, same thing. Set it inside the groove. And then just roll it around. These ones are pretty nimble, you're not going to break it unless you're really aggressive with it. Okay, so now that you have your uh, oil control rings installed, we're going to go ahead, we're going to move to the second ring. Um, oh, one thing to mention about these ones actually is there's no real orientation. Um, there's no top, there's no bottom. Um, you can put them on whichever way. Um, for the second compression ring, there is a little mark on most piston rings. Um, it's either a mark or the design will determine if it goes up or down. Um, for this one, there's an N. Um, I'm pretty sure the N stands for north, up. Um, you're going to want to make sure, obviously, since you filed them, just make sure the ends one more time are not going to catch on the piston itself, not going to catch on the cylinder itself. 
check obviously quickly um, since you filed the rings just make sure there's no sharp edges on it that can catch the piston catch the cylinder um, and then we're going to go ahead remember the end faces up and then you can set the ring into the groove and then you're going to want to this one takes a little bit more effort but you're going to want to position the ring into the groove as it goes around that way you don't end up over tensioning it and breaking it so you roll it around it slowly goes into the groove always maintain control of this part of the ring and then rest it into the bottom ring just like that now once you have it onto the piston itself you can squeeze it rotate it make sure it doesn't have any um, I guess catching points um, once we have these installed we're going to check the clearances of the rings just to make sure that it is kosher and we're not going to have any issues so now that you have your piston uh, rings installed you're going to want to go ahead just again make sure they don't have they don't bind anywhere they move freely they come in and out um, once they're installed in the, in the bore um, they do um, need to I guess move in and out of the piston itself this way um, so you want to make sure that there's nowhere in there that's too thick or they grab um, they do also um, move around a little bit while they're in the bore so you definitely want to make sure that there's nowhere that they can grab on and fail if the piston ring happens to get stuck one way um, and puts more tension on the other side um, that can cause issues okay so now that you have your piston rings installed we can go ahead and we can orientate the um, piston rings themselves um, this will maximize I guess uh, oil control as well as maximum compression that the engine will make um, when you line the gaps of the piston rings into certain positions um, it provides for a good break-in um, good engine sealing um, or good ring sealing uh, you're gonna always want to make sure that the top ring is on the major thrust side um, so that's going to be this side of the piston um, the major thrust side of a piston just for quick knowledge is going to be on the side of the piston that's being pushed down as the crankshaft rotates so the major thrust side is going to be you're going to get forces down and into the cylinder wall so that's going to be the intake side on the rb26 most engines are the same unless they spin in the opposite direction um, so top ring is going to rotate towards just off the center side of the intake of the piston and then the second ring is going to be the exact opposite of that on the minor thrust side so opposite side of the piston so when you have your first piston uh, ring is going to face towards this direction the second one's going to taste face the opposite direction then your oil ring is going to face this way your top oil ring control ring is going to face this way which is where I have it now and then the other one is going to be the opposite direction as well so the bottom oil o-ring we're going to face it the opposite direction so I'm just going to rotate that one a little bit So it's kind of an X pattern across the piston. Um, and that way, when you go to install your piston into your engine, all the rings are gonna be misaligned and there won't be anywhere where the compression or cylinder gases can pass by um, easily. And it will allow for a good break-in and um, um, great compression seal. So now that we have all of our piston rings onto our pistons. Uh, we have our rods and pistons and pins and bearings all assembled now. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take the torque plate off the block. We're gonna put the block onto a stand now. Do more cleaning, of course. Always gotta be doing the cleaning. Clean the cylinders. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start installing them into the block. Um, so we will jump to that now. Thank you. 